What's up, Outriders? Amber here with another Devastator build guide. This one is a bleed build. And you know, I had shied away from doing a bleed build because it seemed like bleed just wasn't very powerful in this game. But I'm going to show you the skills, the mods that you can use to make bleed supercharged and actually do a ton of damage. And I was trying to do a firepower build, but I got stuck at T12. But with this bleed build, I cleared T12 and T13 easily. So let's look at the skill tree. You could almost call this a vampire build because this blood donation hero node heals you for 25% of your bleed damage. So while your enemies are bleeding, you're being healed. And then the other nodes you want to be sure to pick up here are the blood bath, which increases the damage of bleed, and the Red Rivers, which increases the duration of bleed. So between all these nodes, you're gonna get healed by bleed, you're gonna increase the damage and the duration. And this one, protected by the anomaly, is gonna give you more armor based on your anomaly power. And you're gonna increase your anomaly power by picking up the anomaly nodes here. So between the blood donation that heals you based on your bleed damage and getting additional armor based on your anomaly power, this build actually has decent survivability. I was really surprised. And then as far as even more armor, <laughs> skilled sentry is gonna give you an armor buff and a resistance buff when your skills end. And it may seem like that's not very useful because how often are you really using skills? But that's why you want to pick up these cooldown nodes, because this is going to decrease the cooldown for your skills, for your seismic skills and your kinetic skills. And so putting this all together, you're going to be using skills really frequently and every time you're going to be buffing your armor. And finally, the capstone node, Earth's Heritage, increased seismic skills base damage by 50%. So every time you're doing an earthquake, you're going to be applying bleed and also doing a bunch of damage. And then the other nodes here, resistance piercing and skill leech. So let's take a quick look at the skills that I'm using. The main seismic skill is earthquake. This is going to deal damage and also apply bleed because I'm using a mod to apply bleed with my earthquake. I'm also using a tier two and a tier three mod to give me an extra earthquake. So I'm gonna actually have three earthquakes before the cooldown. And then on endless mass, this is really useful to get your enemies together. So it's gonna pull enemies together and then you can get all of them at once with your earthquake because earthquake only works on a cone in front of you. So you want to get the enemies in front of you. And finally, Gravity Leap. This is a kinetic skill, as is Endless Mass. Gravity Leap is awesome for mobility, getting around the battlefield, getting out of sticky situations, and also if you want to heal yourself because Gravity Leap is going to allow you to kill an enemy at close range pretty quickly. So let's take a look now at the gear. I have epic weapons. I don't have any legendary weapons, but I have a tier three mod here, Shadow Comet. That's my current favorite tier three mod. And I put Shadow Comet on both of my weapons, my primary weapon and secondary weapon, so I can actually swap between them and shoot one Shadow Comet and then another Shadow Comet right in a row. So that's why I'm using the same mods on both of the weapons. And you'll see in the gameplay that I'm actually swapping between these two weapons to get the Shadow Comet to perk twice in a row instead of having to wait three seconds between them. I'm using an LMG. That's just what I happen to have. I would love to get another AR in this slot. I think the assault rifles are actually better than the LMGs, but LMGs are pretty good too. And then finally for my pistol, I don't actually use my pistol in this run. I have freeze on here for the 
expeditions where you have to fight flying enemies because I find freeze works really well on the flying enemies. But for this chem plant gameplay you're seeing, I'm just using the two uh, primary weapon and secondary weapon. So let's take a look at the armor. As you can see, I've got some legendary armor and some epic armor. For the head, I've got blood shock. And this is critical because this is gonna inflict bleed on enemies damaged by earthquake. And with all that extra bleed damage and bleed duration, this is gonna be really useful. And then I have emergency stance, which is gonna pop golem if I get too low on health, below 30% health. That's just to help me if I get a little too low on health. And then another mod for earthquake here, extra quake. So I have extra quake and then I have second quake to give me additional earthquakes. And then here I have bloody boost to boost my damage against enemies afflicted with bleed. So that means if I do multiple earthquakes, the first earthquake, I'm gonna inflict bleed. And then the second earthquake, I'm gonna do 15% more damage because those enemies just got hit with bleed. And now I am using the Seismic Commanders set. I have the legs, the gloves, and the boots. On the legs, the tier three mod is Tainted Blood, which you do 25% more damage. And so blood, the one on my chest and on my legs stack. So I'm doing 15 plus 25% additional damage to enemies afflicted with bleed. And then I have Captain Hunter as another mod on the legs. And then on the gloves, I didn't modify any of the mods here. I'm just using it as is. Asunder is another earthquake mod that enemies affected by the skill are gonna permanently lose 20% of their armor. And then the tier one mod is Ground Crush, which increases the base damage of Earthquake. And so you're increasing your damage and decreasing the enemy's armor. And then for the foot gear, Second Quake is actually gonna give me a third Earthquake. So I'm gonna have three Earthquakes. And then Damage Absorber. This is one of my favorite skills to give you even more armor. You already have a lot of armor and a lot of survivability with this build, but Damage Absorber just takes it to the next level. If you find you already have enough armor, you could swap in another mod here, maybe a mod to do more damage, but I find that the Damage Absorber is pretty necessary. And then finally, I'll just show my stats if you wanna take a look here. One thing I'll call your attention to is my global cooldown reduction is 121%. I've got cooldown attributes on multiple items and also on the skill tree. So that's gonna allow me to use skills really frequently. So I recommend getting cooldown reduction on your gear if you can. And then to finish up, let's take a look at some more gameplay. I'm gonna show a couple examples of me using endless mass to get the enemies together and then earthquake to deal damage. And this, I think, is a really fun part of the build. This is really a fun build to play. It just looks really cool to pick up all those enemies, put them together, and then knock them out with Earthquake. And then finally here, I'll show the end of this run where I kill the Broodmother and then finish off the rest of the enemies to get silver on Chemplant T13. This is Amber. Subscribe to my channel for more guides and gameplay for Outriders.